morning day three had a very windy night with a lot of rain tent kept us nice and dry but my sleeping mat went down which is not surprising because it's got about 4,000 kilometers on it it's been slept on probably about 150 nights at least so we've just got a weather report from the ranger station at Mini Glacier and now we're off the uh, path is extremely easy today but it looks like this is one of these short hikes that tourists visiting the area do so we'll have nice paths until we uh, actually kick off into the the backcountry stuff but it's very pleasant very cool so no chance of heat stroke today yes yeah, very beautiful and here comes Mrs Thomas absolute stunner I think it's actually going to start raining on us soon so I'll put the camera away and uh, take my fleece off and maybe put my raincoat on because definitely cooler temperatures don't want to get hypothermia when we're going up over the pass today so got to be careful of that sort of thing even though it's summer there's still plenty of snow up there and apparently it can snow on us at any time so it's all going to be pretty vigilant anyway got some miles to make Not the nicest weather, but the location here, just amazing. Anyway, got to keep moving forward, just to stay warm. But yeah, just wanted to share just how amazing this place is. That's the pass we're going up to, well that's where I think it is, but how amazing is this? Like. summertime still heaps of snow the massive uh, waterfall there I don't know if the camera's picking it up because I've got it zoomed back a bit to sort of get as much of the scenery but it's just spectacular here we're just going to have a quick feed and then we've got to boost up uh, I think it's about seven eight hundred meters Hopefully it's uh, not too hard. And then we'll cruise down the other side and then it's a long walk to our campsite. But I've got to spend some time tonight um, fixing my sleeping pad so I can actually get some sleep. Hey guys, back on trail. Pretty stunning, really nice walk today. There's lots of ground squirrels squeaking and making all sorts of noise around this part. It's, uh, it's in the afternoon now. Yesterday when we got up on top of Pygum Pass, the winds up there were ferocious to the point where it would actually pick me up and move me um, and there was hail that stung your face and we got to within a couple hundred metres of the actual pass but we were going to have to stay up on the ridge for another couple of kilometres and both Helen and I were already starting to get hypothermia so we turned around and went back to Mini Glacier got a room had awfully long showers, warmed up, the left the heater on all night, woke up this morning feeling good, um, went to the ranger station to see if I'd get, get our permits changed so that we would go over Pegan Pass tomorrow and then we would be basically a day behind all the way but others had already booked out those campsites. So 
Helen got online, sorted out a uh, ride, and when we get to today's campsite, it's the one we should have got to today anyway. Um, in terms of mileage, we're only missing about 10 kilometres of track, because yesterday basically we walked half of it and then walked it back. So we're pretty much right on schedule. Wasn't what we wanted to do, but you can't fight the uh, the elements. And yesterday was so cold that when I turned around, Helen had several centimetres of ice down her left side that was clinging to her body. So it just sort of shows how cold it was and why there's no footage for yesterday because it was just bitter. Um, yeah, don't really have much else to say. But if we see anything interesting on trail, I'll pull out my phone and hopefully get some... Oh, yes, sorry. Helen wants me to add that we stopped in St Mary's and went to a small diner there and got some bison cheeseburgers. They were fantastic. Everything about them was a perfect burger. Weren't too expensive. The people there were really friendly. So if you're ever in... Uh, Montana, going through St Mary's, go to the Park Cafe, to the park cafe and get yourself a bison cheeseburger, you won't be uh, disappointed. Actually it was a bit of a highlight for today really, just because it was a bit of a bummer having to miss a little bit of trail, but it is what it is in over 4,900 plus kilometres. I think 10 kilometres is acceptable to miss. Hopefully we don't have any other weather problems like that. But it looks like generally that everything's sort of clearing up. So we should get through to East Place here nice and, nice and easy-ish. I mean, none of it's easy. It's all pretty hard, but there's hard and then there's like, you're going to die hard. So, got to keep it real. Got to know your limits. Got to stay safe. Not sure if it comes up on the camera, but way in the distance there is where we would have been today normally, and the mountain is completely covered in snow. So, yeah, that storm was really impressive. Beautiful lake, too, that we get to walk alongside. It's only 300 metres of climbing till we get to the camp, so it's a nice easy stroll. I think it's about 14 kilometres. So uh, lots of pretty flowers and some pieces to look at. The plants here seem to change a lot. Go through areas where there's a lot of certain plants, and then get to another area, and there's none of them in the they're all new, so it's, it's interesting. <coughs> Just a bit of an update. Sort of, we've climbed a bit. You see the really snowy mountains in the back there where we were meant to be today, but we never got to. It's okay because we still have hundreds of kilometres of beautiful mountains. That uh, one in front of us, you see, there's a massive ground area. It's I don't know if it comes up on the camera, but it's all burnt. And all this area here down the bottom is burnt as well. But the trees are starting to come back. Stunning field here, just full of different flowers. and So even the mundane here is beautiful. We're just going to stop and have a bit of a break. Legs are still sore from yesterday's epic mission. Yeah, there's Helen over there, she's been enjoying, there was an eagle overhead for a while cruising around checking us out, so that was pretty cool seeing him. That's the second for the trip, the first one we saw, actually we saw him dive out of the sky onto something, he was too far away when he got to the ground, but whatever he nailed, had no chance, when he went overhead, she made a strange noise like a 
plastic shopping bag being held out the window of the car when you're doing a hundred. So uh, it was really impressive. Anyway, I'm gonna have a break and then continue. Right in the middle of that burn area, or some of it, and you can see all the all the new growth. Previously it was all pines here. Now everything else is springing up. You can see the old dead pines there in the background. But it's remarkable how quickly nature takes back over and that different trees have completely taken over. It's pretty cool. People sort of freak out at all the desolation by fire but as soon as the fire goes out plants and animals start getting back to work and sorting it all out and then you start ending up with beautiful places like this which a couple of years ago was probably black and desolate very cool mm -hmm.